my league goal this season has been one thing and one thing only and that has been to trying to get the legendary weapon Thunder Fury. In Ascension, since we have four different difficulties of raids, you are now actually able to get an upgraded version of the Thunder Fury and specifically this has been my goal to try to get if you're not aware, to get Thunder Fury, you will need 100 Arcanite bars that you craft with a 22 hours cooldown and combining it with some Elementium ores from Blackwing Lair. And then you will need the two legendary bindings that drops from Gar and Gedan and Molten Core. And you can probably guess where this is going since in the background here we have a clip of Gar. Even after Blackwing Lair has been out, in the guild I'm raiding in, we have only been seeing one ascended binding from Gar. I'm number two in the line for this. That is how it is in guilds mostly, that someone has priority on these uh, bindings or legendaries. So I'm just sitting put, I'm waiting. So yeah, just hoping we, we don't have to wait all the way to TBC for this to happen. Let's just get into the clip. I was told for some reason, I don't know what reason, but my reaction were kinda <laughs> interesting. So I was surprised myself, yeah. The the clip speaks by itself, so yeah, let's let's just roll it. Oh, oh binding! Oh, but it's the wrong one. Yeah, no, right. it's the right one. I fucking hate. This uh, <laughs> grabs the box. Ah, uh, it's Handalu, right? Ah, uh, guys, pass oh. up on the binding. It's for spawn But box. I need it. <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> oh, help on doggo, run! All right, let's have a double binding drop and the eye drop, boys, tonight. Fucking tonight. don't say it, Bass. I'm what do you shit, mean, man? You jinxed it. Holy fuck. Yeah. No, I didn't. Uh, now we're not getting shit. Bass. I'm never getting the second fucking binding. You are. This rate, you are getting it. If it drops, I will also give you 3k gold for funding. 3k? At an extra zero, mate. No, I'm not that <laughs> 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 I would love to, but I can't. So <laughs> double it to go to the next person. <laughs> what do you mean be on YouTube as a star he, now? Yeah, you're paying plenty of gold. I st I have it should, it should I, be I, like surrounding you to give you gold now. Like I, rec what? I recorded it. Holy fuck. And I, Did I, you also I, record the <laughs> I, I don't know, probably. I don't know. I'm yeah, you better do, do that voice in the video. Yeah, <laughs> <fuck>. <laughs> <laughs> <You> keep that. <laughs> Look at me, I got uh, oh, that's gold. That's I am not. literally shaking, holy <laughs> dude, dude, you won't get the second one. <laughs> no, I mean, never I don't know, but... You have so mean... many need Baron Binding, I needed an Heroic as well. Yeah, but now Small is next in the Dino Ascented Mythic. Uh, I mean, I'm leave. calling it. I'm calling it's it. I could be dropping it's the gonna... wrong Binding, though, because the Makers also called the Binding. <laughs> it's gonna happen. I don't know if you noticed it, but I was so excited. I don't know. I don't. I didn't have. I did. <laughs> I haven't had that feeling in a video game for a long time. I've been so excited to see loot drop, and it was an amazing feeling. Here, I'm gonna transition over to talk about the cat build. And you can see the damage. The build is now doing 24k DPS, and that is even without <laughs> a mystic enchant because I forgot to swap. And here we're also doing a pull on Golemag where you can see the DPS. But on Golemag, we have the two ads. So the Ferocious Bite, AKA the Venomous Fury, is also doing some cleaving. And so the rotation is for Cat is pretty simple. We have the two parts. We have the opener, where we do the snapshot of Rip. And then we're basically doing a pretty simple rotation with the claw into Mangle, and then following it up by Venomous Fury into a Wrath. So yeah, besides the opener, the rotation are pretty simple. And then we're heading into Stormwind to talk about both the Cat build, but also the Single Minor Fury and how that build is going. No! Grip me. Who the hell fell down? Not me. I'm stepped at, I'm stuck. We belong to the streets. He fall going over the build. I'm gonna do a quick DPS test in the city so we can see the difference compared to raid. Right now, I don't have any buff, so this will just be the raw unbuffed uh, version of what the build can do right now. Still missing Berserk, and I'm still missing Serpent Strikes, so we still have a lot of uh, DPS to, to gain. This is the DPS so far of the build. We are landing around 28k DPS. Another thing you maybe saw in the rotation is that I don't have the full talent of Honor Monk Thieves, meaning that my only source of extra combo points is coming from Primal Fury. And currently I'm not on a very high crit chance without my time buff to crit and will war cry. So a lot of times I have to either cast free claws or combination with mangle before 
putting out the Venomous Fury. That is because in order to cast the Wrath for free in cat form, we want to be on maximum combo points, else it's only a chance and it's very awkward. Another way you can gain extra combo points, either from getting more crit chance for your Claw or Mangle, and the probably the best option is going to be Honor Monk's Thieves, it's just going to align so well and just always give us the combo points. And the last option, I don't think we need all three, but then there's the Rising Wrath, that is also something to look out for, that's just going to smooth out the rotation so much. That is also, if you look at our damage breakdown, I know I'm casting both Mangle and Claw, but the damage of both of them are just so low, so we really don't want to spend too much time on casting these more than needed. With other crucial stuff I am needing or was needing, I didn't have double claw for a long time. Without the double claw, that was the last talent I got for the build. I was doing around 24 DPS. This is by far the best talent for the build and it's just gonna give you so much damage. Oh, another ability that we're needing is Gold Rinse Fury. This is also gonna be so much damage increase because then we can weave between Tiger's Fury and Gold Rinse Fury to have more uptime on the damage increase from uh, Tiger's Fury. And also the Gold Rinse Fury is uh, a nice little uh, extra damage. Some other talents I've been picking up and trying out is the last stand combo. So for last stand, it uh, it's a it's a cooldown with uh, not being on global cooldown, and you have the talent there for glory that will boost your melee attack power with 10%. So let's just give it a click, and we can see how much it increases us. So we are at around 1800, and we click it, and we go to 2000. So that is just a very nice uh, boost for our snapshot. If you're not aware what a snapshot is, it's basically when we have an ability that is a damage over time. In this context, it's Serpent Venom. So normally this wouldn't be that good because it will fall off after 12 seconds. But in Ascension, we have this talent called Traumatic Wounds. Each time we claw Ferocious Bite, we extend the duration, meaning that this will instead last forever, basically. The very important thing here is that Traumatic Wounds doesn't refresh it, it extends it. So that is also a very key factor of a snapshot. So what does the snapshot mean? This is a very short explanation. So it's basically right before we apply the Serpent Venom, we basically just geek above ourselves. We Arcane Power, Last Stand for the Attack Power, Call of the Wild, we Shamanistic Rage for the 9% damage from the Unleashed Rage, Tiger's Fury, this is 12% increased damage. If you have it, we also get 4 stacks, 8% damage, so Hunger for Blood, 10% increased damage. And the last two, we also have War Cry and Skull Banner. Since when we are casting the Serpent Venom with 40% extra crit, it will go up to 100% crit, and the Serpent Venom will have 100% increased crit for the rest of the fight. That Serpent Venom that had all of these buffs, so our Serpent Venom is getting giga juiced and hitting for like 20k per tick. As you can see here, I just bought a Scroll of Fortune. We are currently sitting at 537 rolls, close to 2 million marks invested. So that is a lot of marks, but it's also a spec that I really wanted to perform. For my talent cards, I am still not sure what the best way are. I think either card for some of the capstones for this build, they are so good. But some of the other talents, an example is Double Clawed. It is just, it gave me like 6k DPS. This is basically a must have. It is insane how much damage it can be. When when talents like Infused Energy really change up your rotation, you would really you should really consider to card something like this. Because it changes the way the rotation works. Because with Infused Energy, instead of casting Venomous Fury into a Wrath, you want to save the proc from the Wrath until you have a fresh, until you have a Venomous Fury that is re ready, then cast the Wrath, and then right after the Wrath, you cast a full combo points uh, Venomous Fury. So for my talents, what now? What am I looking to upgrade? You saw me doing close to 30k DPS, and I still have some very big upgrades. I'm still missing a lot of crit for Wrath. I'm trying to look for the Arcane Flow, so I get 5% more magic damage for my snapshot. I really want to get my crit talents up. I also really want to just have more pure melee crit that will boost my poison damage and it will also mean that I don't need both the Warcry and the Skull Banner if I can just get my Serpent Venom to 83% crit. Another very strong talent I'm also looking for is Infected Wounds, but 9% damage to my Serpent Venom that is already so much of my damage. At some point I really want to consider getting rid of my Rend and Tear. Only Ferocious Bite damage is very good, especially when you're starting out, but later down the line when you have a talent like Elemental Devastation, and when you have the Mystic and Chance for it, you can just get the, the last amount of crit during the combat just from Elemental Devastation. 
And when you do the snapshot, you can just use a walk ride, so you don't need to fish for the raft on pull. And yeah, doing 30k DPS now and missing so like crucial talents, like most of these talents down here doesn't really do that much for me. I'm also going to consider specking out a venomous wound and bloody claws because claw is just very low amount of my damage right now. And since I've been lucky to roll the natural strong, whenever I get the serpent strike, my rotation would still be serpent strike into mangle, into venomous fury, into wrath, and serpent strike into mangle, oh, into mangle. That means that I will just be keeping my natural strong up for my mangle and that also means that I will only be casting one mangle and one claw. So for just casting one of them and they are not being that much damage and more focusing on the wrath, venomous fury, poison and all of the procs like predator's wrath and the damage from serpent form. I, as I see it right now, I think it's just more worth to focus on other things uh, for the build. But again, I'm still very scared of getting rid of any energy talent. So. I'm very careful with that and I'm not even sure how to really test it. So yeah, been very hyped to play this build. It's basically a conflag snapshotting build but in melee form. So and if you see my conflag video, I am a big sucker for <laughs> snapshotting in Ascension. And yeah, I really like the rotation. It's very fast paced. If you want to copy this uh, week hour, I have linked to the YouTuber that I <laughs> borrowed it from link to his channel in the description we are ending the video with talking a bit about how my journey with the smf build are this is the five or seventh iteration of the build and how i carded it trying to roll it here as you can see in the video i have finally gotten a version that i'm very excited about and i've been actually spending a ton of marks on how many marks we're getting into it later and how my prestige looked right now for my rotation i am I am very much not sure how to do the rotation. For this iteration, as you can see, we are casting Bloodfirst into Slam. That is proccing the Draconic Slam that making our Slam instant. By proccing this, we are getting the buff Dragon's Fury. The Dragon's Fury will increase the damage of our Dragon Roll and using the Slam will reduce the cooldown. That is a very nice interaction and the Dragon Roll is uh, reaching upwards to 23k uh, crits. Another nice interaction is that I got the Titanic Strike and the Titan's Fury Kit to work. As you can see, we are at 300 rage. I would prefer to be a bit higher. And by having that a bit higher, I would need to cast Titan's Fury a bit less. So if I was at 500 rage instead, I would only need to be casting Titanic Strike each 20 seconds. So that is somewhat to improve. This build is by any means not perfect yet. It is still something that I basically just rolled two days ago and um and something that i'm now really trying to min max and get the the last talent so for the optimized rotation the best talents the best aries and stuff like that i have still yet to figure out and there's probably a very smart cast sequence macro with the most optimal rotation but that i am also still yet to discover and also before i get a lot of questions for this about week hours I am using the add-on Tell Me When to track my Titan's Fury, my Enrage, actually a, a Draconic Slam that I put above my Slam. It is working for me, so <laughs> that is uh, that is all I need for, for right now. Later on, if I really want to min-max and optimize my damage, I am gonna try set up with a friend some uh, nice week hours uh, for the build. Quickly going over how I carded my build. Still, I would, all, I would say always card single minor Fury. Titanic Strike, you depends on what cards and what combos you have you could also replace it with the with the dragon roll to just get the combo and maybe if you're really low on cards or just have the combo instead and not any of these you could also just cut the battle charge and you would have the battle charge combo right out of the box and if you don't have the hateful strike legendary you could also just be cutting a model strike uh, instead for talent cards i am pretty happy with this setup for talents, I've been pretty happy with carding the 1 out of 1 talents. There is a new thing that I've been starting to, when a talent is so neat to have, like with the Honor Monks Thieves, getting the help from the combo points for the Titan's Fury combo, and also with the, with the maximum rage talent that are basically needed in order to even get the Titan's Fury to work. I would say that could be a very good idea to even card this to just get the 
the need to have out of the box and by doing this you will from the start learn the rotation and how it feels to be casting the titanic strike to change the rotation in that regard and that also means with the titan's fury it is probably the number one build defining thing because it removes all of the hassle with the rage talents and solving your rage problems also with the Grobashi Berserker. So just having this right out of the box and, no, and not needing a lot of random talents until you get Titan's Fury combo. Yeah, I would say this is uh, probably still my uh, my need to need and big su biggest suggestion to, to card this. The reasoning behind I'm carding here comes the big one is because of the talent uh, Blood Surge. It's something I saw from the pro warrior players, but it's purely because trying to align armor reduction from blood surge with the here comes the big one so you synchronize them and by carding at least here comes the big one and hopefully hitting this you will learn that rotation and learning and trying to adapt to fitting that the synergy in your rotation from the start since there was some confusion no this is sadly not my build i wish though all credit goes to microplastic and thanks a lot i assume since you shared it to me and you saw my last video where I mentioned you that uh, this was shareable for people who's asked or that so you don't have people to ask you about uh, what the abilities you're using. And for everyone who uses, and for myself included, for uses these abilities, remember these are other players' current abilities. Players are always like iterating on the builds and trying to improve and finding something new. The last I heard about the build that they are brewing on Discord it's the improved slam so they're considering to remove this because well you don't need the cast speed reduction and slam is not that much of the damage and the question does it even uh, affect the wind slam and the draconic uh, and as you can see another thing the blades of blood combo in this iteration the later post i got from the abilities it doesn't seem that he uses the hunger for blood and all of the rent modifiers and i don't think you get auto applied rent from the blades of blood so that is also something he removed the reasoning behind it is that what i heard is that he's doing some high rate trials and in those high rate trials you really need all of these very crucial and impactful utility and that means that you don't have space for like a blades of blood the utility pack and by using that template my last prestige i did a resolute mode and i was very pleased with this outcome I hit four of the one out of one talents and a lot of the what I feel kind of impactful like enraged stuff like that I really want talents and that's where I said well now I'm gonna invest I'm gonna spend my marks and trying to roll it and this is the outcome so this is after around 150 and that is equivalent to around 400,000 marks of ascension. That is not taking into consideration that I've spent a lot of scrolls of fortune from mana storm farming. So keep that in mind. I'm very happy with this outcome and I can't wait to try progress it even more and, and try to discover stuff about the build. And here you can see the build in game as the progress right now. I am needing and really missing the battle chart because right now I have talents like crushing charge that are basically at that talent until I get the battle chart. So really looking forward to that. A lot of people have also asked me about what the Ares I use. And to be fair, I really don't have a good answer. Right now I'm trying with Fighter's Blood first, Hacking Slash, Hacking Slash, I really feel a lackluster. Another option could be Polak Specialization. It's basically good crit and good crit damage. Else it's underneath Fury for the last talent. Speaking of Polak Specialization, I heard, I think the this was nerfed, I don't know if it was reverted because it gave too much damage from the crit and it seems like warrior builds are already kind of a bit behind compared to like wild limbs, pure shadow, stuff like that. So I don't know if this is justified even though if it's bugged. So if it's true and it got nerfed, maybe consider to try out the source plus station and try to look for it. Maybe don't reroll it if you see it. So could be something to look out to. The last thing I'm going to touch on is that I heard for some some people doing the numbers that if you have the mental quickness, then the judgment set becomes the best set for even warriors because of how spell power works, because you still get uh, weapon damage from having spell power. And I just it's just so weird to me that you have a basically have a video game and you have a warrior spec 
and the best armor for it is not the pure strength one that i'm probably not i'm probably just gonna say i don't care what the numbers say i'm just going with the warrior build it could possibly be wrong and i could be missing like troopers and damage but i'm playing a warrior build i i kind of just want to have the warrior set for that and of course you should choose the set you want and if the paladin are stronger and you want the strongest thing of course you should definitely take the paladin stuff especially if you have hit the mental quickness so that is up for you to decide something to consider is that the warrior set gives a, a lot more strength so you get a lot a bit more benefits from the masters of arms so yeah keep that in mind i hope you could use some of the updates and discoveries for the two builds and yeah, since uh, this video took way too long to edit and it's gotten so late, I have no more clever stuff to say other than subscribe and bye. <laughs>